very first meeting that we had um, with the graphic recording in this process was with uh, supporting our seniors group. It's a group of um, advocates for seniors and there were a few other uh, senior serving organizations that also attended. The key question that we identified was how do we assist seniors to age in place? Basically, we define that as living in their own homes as long as possible. Very first topic that came up from the group is the whole issue of transportation, that we need an effective public transportation system. How do we balance the cost versus the frequency of use? In general, we need more effective public transportation, but for seniors particularly, perhaps the handy dart service is the best option. Would it be cheaper if they were operating smaller vehicles, could they be more frequent, could they extend the hours because it's only during daytime so that doesn't allow for any evening activities. A very innovative point was made about well perhaps mini nodes could be created in the rural areas using community centers as the, the destination and that would mean that if a senior needed to ask a neighbor to drive them to the, the bus or drive them then they could could be taken to a central area where they could pick up a bus. Um, the idea also was that it could be more than just transportation then, that there could also be services. Other kinds of transportation concerns include needing uh, safer roads and highways. That's a message that came through consistently. Sometimes it's too dark or there's no shoulder, so seniors are afraid to use these roads. Infrequent maintenance was another uh, comment that came up frequently. So a suggested solution is to crea create space for active transportation, um, including scooters and wheelchairs. Zoning favors urban sprawl, big box stores, shopping malls, and so on, which destroys walkable town centers. So the impact on seniors about that is that it's difficult for them to go and um, walk around and meet their needs because uh, the, the town centers have been decimated by the um, creation of shopping malls and big box stores on the outskirts of the communities. Um, but it's also had implication on transit routes. So buses will go to Walmart, but they won't go to the library, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a need for transit to go to the right places in terms of support services and the very first one that came out was the need for access to high-speed internet. Some people were saying that they still get their internet through the telephone and it's very slow. Um, another support service that's highly needed is the concept of adult daycare um, which provides respite for caregivers as well. So adult day programs so that they are able to get out of the house, get some stimulation, get some socialization and so on but also then that gives a rest to the people who are caregivers. The health benefits of the social aspect of these programs and services, um, the connection and community that's so necessary, um, and how social isolation is um, deterrent to good health. Housing came up, um, and the idea of tiny houses up to 600 square feet is a form of a co-op or co-housing, so on rural properties, but clustered around a big house which contained the amenities like the bathtubs, the uh, kitchens, the dining rooms, and so on and so forth, so that people could maintain their independence. We talked a little bit about another alternative, which is supportive housing, where some of the surplus bedroom capacity in some of the large rural homes could be used to provide housing for seniors as kind of a home-based business. Of course, there would have to be uh, separate bedrooms, communal living space, meals provided, and so on and so forth. The last part is about policy concerns, you know, our, uh, how to maintain connections between seniors and their advocates and the CBRD government to maintain those communications. You know, one suggestion was around town halls, one suggestion was around periodic established meetings just on seniors issues, another option was to look at seniors advisory committees or that kind of a, a function. Uh, another way would be to involve seniors through other groups or organizations they're already involved with, so not creating something new, but meeting people where they are. Another suggestion about um, meeting seniors' concerns is to perhaps hire a senior's advocate within the regional district's uh, structure. So that would be a person who worked one-on-one -on -one with seniors to assist them with their individual issues, so advocate for them or help them with paperwork or whatever it might, it might be. The suggestion was that maybe that could be run jointly with VHA, that that would be a, a good way to do that. Um, 
leverage existing structures was another suggestion. Other issues that came up, recreation, um, you know, RVs, what are the implications of people um, having RVs, what kind of services do we have for RVs, you know, seniors coming in as tourists, but also seniors who are resident in the communities going out for the winter, and what are the implications for community around that?